Over here, honey. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. And welcome to our service this afternoon. Hak Sameach. Hak Sameach. Feast of Trumpets. I'm just wondering if how many trumpets we actually have out here. If one here, and there, I see one up here. Excellent. So there may be some trumpet, and Debbie has her trumpet, wonderful, her shofar. Bless you. What a joy it is to be in the house of God. Hallelujah. All peace are upon us. And we just want to welcome each and every one. We have visitors for the first time. Welcome to this service. We have a number of important, significant things that we want to do this particular service. We will uh, see baptisms, we will hear, hear testimonies and see baptisms. There will be an honor roll of those that have passed in the last 30 months. Uh, these have been unusual times. We were not able to always do a celebration of life service. And so we want to acknowledge those that have passed in the last 30 months and are awaiting resurrection. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So you have, if you have your bulletin, there's a number of announcements. Uh, just be aware, the Zoom Bible study. Uh, Tuesday evenings, please uh, tune in, Zoom Bible study. The Zoom codes are in your inbox, in your email. So please uh, join us for the Zoom Bible study on Tuesday. We have people from Vancouver Island, from Calgary, Delta, all over, all over, attending that uh, Bible study. So you have a list of the uh, uh, feast days and the celebrations that we are planning. And so we pray that God helps us, is with us each and every day throughout the fall feast. Amen. I will call upon our brother Ron. And uh, since it's Feast of Trumpets, uh, anyone else with a trumpet that would like to join us up here? I know that's throwing, throwing something up, uh, kind of onto you, Ron, but we'll let Ron be the lead, and trumpeters, you can trumpet in echo. Oh, 
shine, for your light has come. The glory of Adonai has risen upon thee. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. But while we're standing, let's meet and greet one another in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. And I'll ask that those who are going to be baptized, if you would come up and just sit on this front row. So, uh, Scott and Brenda, you raised me. If uh, you freeze, you can come over here, and I think uh, with interpreter and Brenda. Yeah. Brenda just up here, and you freeze. And I guess. And uh, Nicole. Nicole. There you are. Come up as well. Just over here. And embrace. Maybe you could sit on on the front bench there. That, that's good. That's good. Yeah. There we are. Amen. Well, you phrase. Let's uh, let's begin with you. And Euphrates is going to have interpretation. Uh, so she will be speaking au français. And by the way, we'll be baptizing you au français. <laughs> I have my sheet there. I'm going to read it. It's, we'll, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Hallelujah, Église de Dieu. Hallelujah, Church of God. Je m'appelle Euphrasie Quincha. My name is Ephrazi Pinta. Je viens témoigner les merveilles de que Jésus Christ a fait dans ma vie spirituelle à ce jour. I have come to testify the goodness of the Lord and what Jesus has done in my life. J'explique cette vie spirituelle en deux étapes pour ne pas prendre du temps. I'll give this testimony in two steps, so not to take time. Première étape. First step. Au ministère Full Gospel, j'ai pris la décision de recevoir Jésus Christ comme Seigneur et Sauveur de ma vie. At the Full Gospel Ministry in Congo, I made a decision to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. À partir de ce vœu, Jésus Christ a commencé à transformer ma vie par des changements de comportement qui n'étaient pas agréables. When I made this decision, Jesus Christ began to transform my life by changing behaviors and characters that were not pleasant in his eyes. La parole de Dieu m'a aidé à marcher dans la crainte de Dieu et du péché. The word of God helped me to walk in holiness, the fear of the, for God, and to avoid sin. J'ai aussi appris à prier et à mettre en pratique la parole de Dieu. I also learned how to pray and to practice the word of God in my life. Deuxième étape. Second step. En 1995, In 1995, j'ai reçu mon premier baptême par immersion à l'église Zambé Malam au Congo. I received my first baptism by immersion at the God in Good Church in the Congo. Ce qui me créa une persécution érigée dans ma famille catholique parce que j'étais, j'ai quitté la, le catholicisme. After my baptism, I began to experience persecution and rejection from my family, who were all Catholics, because I had left the Catholic Church. But the majority of Congolese are Catholics. After my baptism, 
j'ai commencé à suivre les enseignements sur la parole de Dieu et cela a été au ministère Combat Spirituel. After my baptism, I began to grow in faith and I started to follow the word of God and teachings of a ministry called the Spiritual Warfare and Combat Church. Par la grâce de Dieu, j'ai commencé à exhorter ma progéniture qui était dans le catholicisme et cela n'était pas facile pour moi jusqu'à ce, jusqu ce que le Seigneur me révéla par message de continuer à prier pour eux car mes enfants sont ses enfants et que c'est lui qui me les a donnés. By the grace of God, I began to also minister to my own children who were still in Catholicism. But it was not easy for me until the Lord revealed to me by message that I should continue to pray for them because my children were his children and that it was him who gave them to me and he was going to convert them in his own time. J'ai obéi au Seigneur en commençant à intercéder pour mes enfants pendant un temps et le Seigneur a accompli sa parole car tous ont accepté Jésus-Christ comme Seigneur et Sauveur de leur vie jusqu'à ce jour. Je rends grâce à l'Éternel notre Dieu. I obeyed the Lord and I started to intercede for my children in prayer for a time. And the Lord fulfilled his word because all accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior in their lives until this day. I give thanks to God for this victory. Amen. Amen. Dans toutes les persécutions que j'ai suivies, En suivant Jésus Christ, sa présence a toujours été la consolation et la solution dans ma vie et dans la vie de ma progéniture et ma famille jusqu'à ce jour. In all the persecution that I suffered while following Jesus Christ, his presence has always been the consolation and the solution in my life and in the life of my children and my family to this day. Vu l'amour de Dieu, Et sa grâce infinie sur nous. Aujourd'hui, je me retrouve ici dans l'église messianique où je viens d'apprendre beaucoup plus sur la parole de Dieu et comprendre l'importance de servir le sabbat et comment le servir. Seeing the love of God and his infinite grace upon us, today I find myself here in the messianic church where I have learned so much more about the word of God and understanding the Hebrew root of our faith and the importance of observing the Shabbat and how even to observe it. J'ai décidé de renouveler mon baptême par immersion, demanda à Jésus Christ une grande délivrance et la restauration de ma vie, de ma progéniture et toute ma famille pour la gloire de l'Éternel notre Dieu. Amen. I have therefore decided to renew my baptism today by immersion and asking Jesus Christ to show our for a great deliverance and the restoration of my life, my children, and all my family for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chris. Amen. Nicole, do you need I didn't write anything down. My name is Nicole Martin. I've been going to church since before I was born. So, <laughs> brought me there. Um, I was born and raised in a Roman Catholic church. I've been sprinkled, been confirmed, and the whole nine yards. Um, Mom got into the occult, so um, with the blessings of the church, and so I kind of followed her. And um, the, I don't know if you remember the I Found It Jesus campaign in the 1970s, and my mom started, mom and dad started going to um, a Bible study, and then um, they started questioning a lot, and they started watching 100 Huntley Street, and there was a man who spoke about the occult. His name was Edward Lim, and my mom called up the phone, and he came to our home, and which is unusual. And we, after two days of questioning him, we converted to Christianity. And it was powerful. Um, we burned the occult books in the back and um, 
Spirit of God was upon our family and there was a mass conversion of our Roman Catholic families to Christianity. Um, I became baptized at 12 years old and I love God with all my heart. And even as a Roman Catholic little girl, I loved God and I didn't necessarily um, pray to Mary even though I had every idol there could possibly be in my bedroom because my grandma gave them to me. But I prayed to Jesus and, and um, I used to read my Bible a lot and I had a lot of questions to God and I would take it up with Him. When we became Christians, I didn't stop loving Jesus. I loved Him even more and we renounced our Catholic faith, although I am grateful for it because without that, I wouldn't have known the foundation that I have today. But I know so much more now. And Jesus showed me as much as he did to himself, then, you know, he showed me his sacrifice and all these, the, the beautiful things that he did. But I was confused, and I kept reading my Bible, and I would read the Old Testament. And I'd say, well, why? What's this about the Sabbath? And what does this mean when you say forever? But I'm going to church on Sunday. What does that mean? What does this mean about the food? And I had so many questions. and. But, you know, it was kind of wish-washy and, and didn't make sense. I couldn't, I couldn't understand why the back of the book was different from the front, and it made no sense to me because my dad kept telling me, God is the same forever. From the beginning to the end, he's the same. He does not change. He, he drilled that into my head. So how do I, how do I reconcile this? How? Um... It was amazing back in 2017, um, I started researching into my family history. I'm going, what? Show me, Father. And I loved him, and I knew the Bible pretty good, you know? I said, show me our, our family history here, because I'm trying to understand what's wrong with, we have blood issues in our family, I'm trying to understand this. And I found out uh, an amazing thing was that we um, are Jewish on both sides of the family. Even though we were French Roman Catholic, but when there were recorded on both sides uh, in the in the Jewish job, can't even talk, Jewishgen.org were recorded in there, both both my mom's family and my dad's family. And for six months, I was arguing with the Lord, and I said, no, we're not, I'm not Jewish, I'm not Jewish. Six months, and he kept telling me, yes, you are, yes, you are. But when he showed me that, um, it all made sense. And I said to God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I won't go celebrate. On Shabbat, I won't be eating pork anymore. I'm so sorry. I didn't know what I didn't understand. And he made a massive change in my life right then and there. And the Old Testament started to make sense in a way that I can't even describe to you. The Bible was so alive. I just, I cried and I cried for months. So thankful. I am so thankful that he is he showed this girl the truth and that he's been walking with me all these years. And I just I am I I couldn't understand why, you know, the Bible says you know, to be separate, to be kadosh, to be holy. I didn't even know the word kadosh then. Be separate. My life really wasn't separate. As a, a Christian, it really wasn't that separate. If you, the only thing that was really different was that I read the Bible a lot. But it's separate now. And um, I want to thank God for this opportunity to follow Him with all my heart. And I praise Him. And 
It's amazing. It's an amazing time to be alive. And uh, I am so happy to get baptized again with a whole new set of understanding. I'm very grateful. In the scriptures, the Jewish people would mikvah, they would immerse, and for different, different uh, opportunities, different situations of cleansing. And we find this in the book of Acts 19, where Paul comes across the Ephesians. And they had received John's baptism, a baptism of repentance, but without full understanding of what exactly the whole gospel was. And so he did not say, well, you've been baptized once, that's, you know, that's it. No, he said, well, now you need to understand the fullness of Yeshua, of the coming one, of the Holy Spirit. And so that just kind of gives a little context to what you're hearing today. Brenda, if you would come. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's begotten me again to living hope. I was without hope. I was desperately without hope through my childhood, through my growing years. I didn't know how to find hope or where to find hope. And um, so I got into a lot of stuff, numerology, palmistry, and science of mind. Buddhism, you name it. I was looking for light, I was looking for meaning, I was looking for structure. I used to go to Sunday school, but it was never alive. It, it was a duty, it was a responsibility. I was kind of rebellious, kind of. I was a very rebellious kid, and um, so I wanted to march to my own drum, which I did. And then, um, I have to think now, how did I get into, oh, I remember, I was in Buddhism and this friend, I went back to South Africa through a very difficult time, I came from South Africa, living in Canada, and I went back for a trip, and there a friend of mine led me to the Lord, which I did not understand really, like, who's Jesus, he's a good guy. So I said, yeah, but I know the God who created the trees. So that I will accept the God who created the trees. So that's where I began my journey. It was a long, challenging one. And then she said to me, when you go back to Canada, go to a charismatic church. I didn't know what that was. So I thought, OK, I'll do that. That should be interesting. So when I went to this Catholic charismatic church, um, they would te teach me about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So honestly, I went through everything backwards. I got filled with the Holy Spirit before I fully understood what my salvation was. But God, in His mercy, His loving kindness, His grace, just poured out His love and undergirded me and strengthened me and so began my journey. And from there, I landed up um, being in leadership in the church, a very immature leader. We were in the um, Pentecostal church, and we knew nothing really. We should never have been in leadership, <laughs> but there we were. And through that, I started learning, and I started learning who Jesus is. And then, um, Mervyn and Lula came to our church and started hearing a little bit about the Jewish planting seeds. There were seeds, but um, they didn't take root for a long time. But then um, my son, my middle son Kyle here, would ask me questions, question after question. He used to go to Greek college, he went to church, he went to this. So he was seeing things that I wasn't seeing and understanding things in scripture that I wasn't really getting. So I thought, well, you know, um, by the time I'm 50, I'll have it. By the time I'm 50, I'll be a strong, mature person, and I'll have the answers, and I'll know what it's all about. 
<laughs> and, and so it was an up and down journey trying to understand who is this God and what is he all about and what has he really done for me? And so as I read scripture more and more, the Lord opened my eyes more and more and I began to discover the love of God that he sent his son for me. And it's amazing how people can go to church and do all kinds of things in church and do ministry and not really know the depth of who their God is and what he's done for them. And I had a complete nervous breakdown about 12 years ago. And that was when the Lord started picking up all the pieces of who I am. And I, my middle son again said to me, Mom, come to this Messianic Bible study. And so that's where I started standing on the solid ground, on the solid rock. And I have come to know a Savior who absolutely loves me and has given me an eternal hope, who has put me on a solid rock, who has healed and restored and is restoring my soul. And so to him I give all the glory and honor. Amen. He is my living hope. Amen. Amen. Scott, if you would come. Scott, come. Well, it, it needs to be oh. oh, okay. Hello, my name is Scott Cole, for those who don't know me, but most of you do. And uh, I'd like to say a special thanks to my wife for coming, Jerry Rose, and for my daughter-in-law, Marnie, and her son, Colby. It's a real honor to have you and everyone here. I'd like to say I came to faith in Yeshua almost 50 years ago, and today I'm going to explain why it's taken so long for me to actually get immersed or baptized. Uh, let's start with uh, my trip to Israel, because six years ago, almost to this date, uh, uh, my wife and I, well, here's how it happened. I'm going to share how it happened because we're, we never travel. I've never, 50 years ago I was in New Zealand, but I've never been out of the country in 50 years except the United States, Canada and back. And my wife has been to Hawaii and back, but she's never been out of the country her whole life. So six years ago, you know, it was her birthday coming up and uh, usually, she like, we like simple things, I said. She likes to just walk around downtown Abbotsford and have lunch there. That's a simple, nice birthday. But six years ago, I said, Jerry Rose, for this birthday, what would you like to do? Would you like to walk around downtown Abbotsford or walk around downtown Jerusalem? And she chose Jerusalem. So we went to Israel. And I said, this is the per uh, perfect place to get baptized in the Jordan River, yeah. right? Yeah. What a better place. So I'm going to explain the pos a few positive things about our trip and a few negative things and why I did not get baptized in Israel. First of all, the positive. It was a real, it was probably a, one of our greatest experiences ever going to Israel. I'll just highlight a few of the highlights. As soon as we got there, uh, off the plane, we stopped in the Independence Hall, where Ben Gurion announced uh, 1948, Israel as a nation. We felt like we were there in 1948. Uh, memories of, uh, you know, we, we pray a lot for the peace of Jerusalem. And I remember standing on the balcony of our hotel in Jerusalem, looking out over the city and praying for the peace of Jerusalem. It was quite uh, a nice experience. And then I'd also like to share an experience which, uh, which I never thought I'd be talking about Sh Shabbat Shalom when I went to the Western Wall. The Western Wall, praying there was a real powerful experience. And here's how I witnessed to a Orthodox, ascetic Jewish man at the Western Wall. 
After I finished praying, uh, he was dressed in his all black outfit and long beard and he said, are you Jewish? And I said, yes. He said, is your mother Jewish? Is that how you? I said, yes, she is, and so is my father. He says, can I put tefillin? Is it tefillin uh, on you? That they wrap that around your arms and body. For pr I never had that done. And I said, uh, I said, yeah, I never had it, so you can do it. So he started to do that, and then he asked me, do you go to the synagogue? And I told him I was from Canada. Do you go to the synagogue in Canada? And then I, the door was open, and I said, yes, I do. I go to Shabbat Shel Shalom, a Messianic Jewish synagogue. As <laughs> soon as I said Messianic, it was like a bolt of lightning hit him. It was like, I could, it was like they say the word of God is like a two-edged sword. It was like, oh, it just, something hit him that he couldn't uh, believe that I would say that. He was hoping I'd be a, a nice traditional Jewish man. So anyway, that was an experience where I got to witness in a way to an Orthodox Jewish man. And uh, uh, so that was a, a great, great experience. Now I'll share one of the negative experiences, and that was at the Jordan River. Here I was all excited to get baptized six years ago at the Jordan River, same place where Yeshua got baptized. But when we got there, you know, tourism is the number one industry in Israel. And everything was so commercialized. We walked to the place in the Jordan River and said, buy your baptism robes, 50 shekels, everyone was in line. It was all commercialized. And I felt like I was in Disneyland at a baptism ride or something. So I said, no, this isn't the right atmosphere. That was six years ago. And now I'm here today, six years later. I don't know if I'll ever get back to Israel. I certainly hope I do. But this is a great opportunity, especially during the Feast of Trumpets, I think. So now I'll give my little uh, testimony uh, before I finish. Uh, you know, I'm Jewish, and my dad's name was Cohen before he changed it to Cole. That's my name, Scott Cole. He changed his name when he wanted to get into medical school, and there was a quota on Jewish people. So instead of Cohen, my name has been Cole. And my mom's native, uh, maiden name was Nee, K-N-E-E. -E. And on the way driving here, I heard a song that said, every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Yeshua the Messiah is Lord. And so today in front of Yeshua, in front of my family, in front of the congregation, I bow my knee and confess that Yeshua the Messiah is Lord. Amen. One more confession. This is really important to me, and I want to confess this. But I need someone to read Matthew 23, verses 37 to 39. And someone read it out loud. Matthew 23, verses 37 to to 39. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who have been sent to her. How often did I desire to gather your children, just as a hen gathers the chicks under her wings, but you did not want me to. Behold, your house is abandoned the desolate place for you. For I say to you, you would not see me again until you would say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That's one of my favorite scriptures because Yeshua is talking to his Jewish brethren who rejected him. And the way I read it, he was saying, you know, I'm not coming back again until you bow your knee and say, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I feel like he was talking to me because I'm Jewish. And at this moment in time, as one Jewish man, 
already there's been thousands of Jewish believers coming to faith. But as one Jewish man, I'm going to do my part. As I talk to Yeshua and to everyone, I'm going to say, Baruch Abba Bashem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen.
notre application de foi au nom de Yeshua. Maintenant, je vous baptise au nom du Père, du Fils et du Saint-Esprit. Nicole, we have heard your confession in the name of Yeshua. Now we baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'm a preacher of 
faith, I have three more napkins. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> I don't care if you don't have a change of clothes. Neither does Yeshua. Neither does Yeshua. Yes. Anyone that would like to give confession and to be baptized. Hallelujah. Okay. The water is the right temperature, too. <laughs> Bless you. Uh, I believe there's going to be a dance now. Uh, mind, mind, water, water. We love water. Thank you.
been immersed today to come forward and those that are supporting them family members friends maybe you didn't know you were here to support them but you come on up you want to pray for them each one please those baptized and those supporting them amen so Anna you come up with and Barb you come up with Brenda amen and Brenda and your family Yes, amen, amen. Aren't we having a joyous celebration? Amen. Now, let's start at this end. Brenda. Heavenly Father, in the name of Yeshua and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we seal unto the day of redemption this commitment that Brenda has made. May these be recorded in the courts of heaven, and may she be a wonderful example and testimony to your grace. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Amen. Mon cher mère, you fresh. Bless you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. May our Father, and Père, bless you in His Son's name by the power of His Son Esprit. And Lord, we pray that you would seal to the day of redemption this commitment made today. In your courts of praise, we pray that this be recorded for all eternity. And may all rejoice in the heavens and here on earth. In the name of Yeshua, amen. amen. Nicole, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Father who loves you, the Son who gave himself for you, the Holy Spirit who empowers you, bless you. May your, this commitment you have made today be sealed to the day of redemption. And may in the courts of heaven this all be recorded to the honor and praise and glory of Almighty God. We thank you in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. And Scott, in the name
name of the Father, we thank you for your blessing, Lord, for Scott's life. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have sealed to the day of redemption this commitment that he has made. And Lord, in the name of Yeshua and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray that in the courts, in the very courts of heaven, this be recorded for all eternity. And Lord, may all be praised to your name in heaven and on earth. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. sure we'll have the these wonderful people to um, to meet you in the foyer and do give them your blessing there I'm going to call the children children to come forward <laughs> And we're going to release you to Shabbat school. Uh, the preschoolers will meet in the foyer, and the others will meet in your regular classrooms. Teachers, uh, teachers, if you could meet these children once they go to the foyer and, and uh, let them see where their classes are. Heavenly Father, oh, here's some more coming. Okay, good. Blessings. Heavenly Father, in the name of Yeshua, we thank you for these children. And we dedicate these children to you, Lord. Heavenly Father, when it is time for them to make their public commitment to you, may you guide them to that. And Lord, may you bring them to faith in Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus the Christ. We pray that you would bring them to personal faith. And Lord, we pray that your blessing be upon them today. Give them blessing in Shabbat school. May they learn much of their Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. So if you'll just take them to the foyer and then we'll divide them from there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. time of the Feast of Trumpets, we think of those that have passed on in these last 30 months. Not always have we been able to have a celebration of life service, um, and I wanted to make sure that we acknowledge those that have lost loved ones. I want those that are still grieving their loss to understand that we sorrow not as those without hope. Because as it is this day of trumpets, it's a day of resurrection. We have hope. We have that joy of knowing that we shall see our loved ones again. And so we have the, um, the list, the honor roll. Is that there? There we are. And I want to just read these names along with the friends. Alfred Henwood is a friend of Joan Lunt and also Alfred's sister is here. Welcome. I know that this is a different kind of service, but we certainly want to remember Alfred. And thank you for coming all the way from Nova Scotia to hear this. Alfred was a definite dear brother to you, a dear friend to Joan and all whom he met. I know he was a helper wherever he could be. And so we really want to remember him and tell you how much he meant to Joan and to others in our community. For Alfred, 
Amen. Marta Hiklova, the mother and my mother-in-law, and she only passed away just this summer. And just two and a half years after her husband passed away, and that was the last celebration of life, public celebration of life service, I believe, that we held and before the COVID lockdowns. Mm -hmm. But Marta Hiklova is certainly missed. And my wife cherishes the support that you, her congregation, her family have given to her. Gordy and Amalu, early on in the lockdowns, we learned of Gordy and Amalu passing away within, I think, a month of each other in the spring of 2020. Gordy started the, the dance, the dance troupe here. Uh, I don't know that, that it's a start. I think, I think he was just carrying on as only Gordy can carry on, and I, I mean that. <laughs> and uh, I remember when Gordy and Amalu we were meeting in the music room of the elementary school back in 2011. So 11 years ago. And they came to the music room with Jean-Claude and Eloise. Well, if you know I, my, my ability with names, so there was an Eloise and an Amalou. And it was like, it was, and I think, I, I think I thought they were one person. And somehow it was Alma, Alma Elolu or something. <laughs> but no, here it was Gordy and Amalu James and how we miss them. And we just thank God for their witness among us. Jim Kesick, the brother of Mary Jane, whom we know as MJ. And her brother passed away and it was so difficult for her, and you'll see in a few moments that there was a sec it was like a second loss to her. And so we do remember her brother Jim. Rachel McDougall, where is Lila? Lila, your mother, your dear mother, and we want to acknowledge her. We want to, you know, that she is remembered. You know, this is something that Sometimes when we lose a loved ones, will anyone ever remember them again? You know, are they, do we just move on to other things? I want to say, no, we're not going to just move on to other things. We're going to remember your mother. A wonderful mother to Lila. And then James Terrence Reader. Again, uh, Mary Jane has been through so much this past year. And all kind of on her own because of the lockdowns and things, and, and her son um, passed away near uh, the December holidays, near Hanukkah. And uh, pray for Mary Jane, for MJ. Uh, she's feeling very, still very heartbroken. And so we want to remember her son. Natani? Natani, my apologies. Natani Russell, Janet Gray's mother who was even at 97 taking care of her disabled daughter, um, Valerie, and, and looking in on her and watching over her and wanting to do the best for, for Valerie and ended up uh, having a heart attack and clotting and things because she wanted to see her daughter. It's. We, we just remember your mom. Wonderful, wonderful lady to, to you and to Valerie. Bless you, Janet. And then Brian Leslie Smith, the husband of Leanna Smith, who passed away in the last year or so. And Leanna is new to our congregation, having come from Calgary, but is recently bereft of her husband. And so she comes to us as just recently widowed. So Leanna, may, I know you're new in, in a sense to our congregation in the last few months, but I trust that you really sense the love that we have for you and, and we support you as you, can, as you grieve and that you will have the victory. 
all of you that you'll have the victory and realize for Kip Allen Wedge, son of Ron Gray, I know a foster son, but really a son, very much. And only 63, I believe, when he passed. And we pray blessing to you, Ron, and Janet, to your whole family. And may you have feel and sense the strengthening graces of God. And then, dear, dear Elfrida Davis, the family called me in the winter to come and to pray for Elfrida. And they said she's she is you know she's about ready to pass. And some of you know my story of Sarah Davidson from Maidstone, Saskatchewan. She would park herself every morning at her nursing home just by the doorway and scare the living daylights of the people as they came in and she would say, I'm living for the Lord, you know. <laughs> well, wouldn't you know it, I told Elfrida that story and it did something in her heart, in her life. And she just kept going and going and like, well, better than the Energizer Bunny. <laughs> and I got a call in April I've never got a call like this. One family member said to me, undo what you did. And I said, well, what did I do? And they said, she won't die. <laughs> and I said, I don't know how to undo what I did. And they said, well, you've got to come and do something. Because, you know, she's just hanging on and, and she's breathing and she, there's just, there, she just won't die. <laughs> And so I went there, and I wasn't about to undo what I did. <laughs> but I did say, Heavenly Father, you are in, you are sovereign in all things. And may your will be done. And she still, she still lived a few more weeks after that. I was at her memorial, and what a, what a joy. She told me, I don't want to go out sick and, and, and just, I, she said, I want to go out victorious. I want to have a victorious home going. And it was such, it was such a testament to her family. And she just, you know, she lived until she just simply changed the dresses and lived in heaven and lives today. All of these. We serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. And may we not forget these names and, and really love on these dear people. I want you to know that, that we do care for each and every one of you. Amen. Well, let's stand. We still have a little bit of a sermon to do, so let's stand and stretch a little bit. shall sound and we shall be changed did you know that you are a resurrection people did you know that you're all you already have experienced a resurrection did you know that because Ephesians 2 says you were dead in your trespasses and sins at that time you walked in the way of this world in conformity to the ruler of the domain of the air the ruler of the spirit who is now operating in the sons of disobedience. We too all lived among them in the cravings of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and the mind. By nature we were children or objects of wrath, just like the others. But God, but God was rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. Even when we were dead in, tre in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Messiah. 
by grace you've been saved, and he raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Messiah Yeshua to show in the Olam Haba the measureless richness of his grace in kindness toward us in Messiah Yeshua. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and it's not from yourselves, it's the gift of God. It's not based on deeds, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship created in Messiah Yeshua for good deeds, which God prepared beforehand so we might walk in them. You know, people can do relatively good things, relatively good things. And they, they look at each other and they say, well, I might not be as bad as so-and-so, but I'm better, I'm better than this one. <laughs> you know, we compare ourselves amongst ourselves. And the Bible calls those relatively good things, you know what it calls those kind of works? Dead works. Because they come from a dead heart. So the unsaved can do relatively good things. Total depravity doesn't mean that we're as bad as we always are all the time. What total depravity means is we're as bad off as we could possibly be all the time. But God is a solution for that. He, even when we're dead in our trespasses and sins, raised us up by His mercy, Hallelujah. by grace, through faith. Hallelujah. In John's Gospel, John 5, 20 to 26, we read of this same thing. For the Father loves the Son and shows Him everything He does. He will show Him even greater works than these, so that you will be amazed. For just as the Father raises the dead and gives Him life, so also the Son gives life to whomever He wants. The Father does not judge anyone, but has handed over all judgment to the Son, so that all should honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Amen, amen, I tell you, whoever hears my word and trusts the one who sent me has eternal life. Amen. If you have eternal life, it's eternal. It, it's not probationary, it's eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but is passed over from death to life. Who's passed over? Yes. I didn't ask if you passed on. <laughs> have you passed over from amen. death to life? Uh, amen, amen, I tell you, an hour is coming, and now is here, when the dead will hear the voice of ben Elohim. Those who hear will live, for just as the Father has life in himself, so also he's granted the Son to have life in himself. The hour is coming, and now is. So this is a resurrection that can be experienced now. A resurrection from deadness in sin. When Adam and Eve sinned, they died spiritually. They were separated from God until He did something for them. Until He did something for them. If you are here and you think, well, I'm going to just try harder. I'm just going to do my very best. I'm going to just, make, just see what I can do. Well, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see what any of us could do. What is there to do but believe on the Lord Yeshua, Amen. Jesus Christ? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Luke 17, Yeshua was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come. And he said, the kingdom of God does not come with signs to be seen, nor will they say, look here or there. For behold, the kingdom of God is in your midst. Then Yeshua said to the disciples, The days will come when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. Then you will say, Look here, or look there. Do not go and chase after them. For just as the lightning flashes from one part of the sky and lights up the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must suffer much and be rejected by this generation. As it was in the days of Noah. Hello. <laughs> As it was in the days of Noah, so will it also be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating, drinking, marrying, and being given in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. And it's just the same in the days of Lot. They were eating, drinking, buying, selling, planting, building. But on the day Lot left Sodom, it rained fire and sulfur from heaven and destroyed them all. Sodom went into full judgment, but Lot was taken out and, and his daughters. His wife turned around and she became a pillar of salt. And so, whoever tries to keep his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life will preserve it. Verse 34, 
I tell you, on that night there will be two in one bed, one will be taken and the other left. There will be two women grinding in the same place, one will be taken and the other left. Then there will be two in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Where, Lord, they replied. And he said to them, where there is a corpse, there will also be the vultures be gathered. Mm. Matthew 24. This is just going to be a big scripture from scripture to scripture sermon. Matthew 24. If anyone says to you, look, here's the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. False messiahs, false prophets will rise up and show great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the chosen. See, I have told you beforehand. So if they say to you, look, he's in the wilderness, do not go out, or look, he's in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For, and again, for just as lightning comes from the east and flashes as far as the west, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. And wherever the carcass is, there the vultures will gather. There, there's those birds. I'm going to tell you something. At the coming of the Lord, there will be two great suppers. Did you know that the Bible talks about two great suppers? You want to, you know, when you are invited for supper, you want to be the guest, not the menu. <laughs> there are two great suppers. There is a supper of the birds for bird feed, and there is what supper that you want to go to? The supper of the lamb, the marriage supper of the lamb. That's the one you want to be at, not the other one. Just note. <laughs> At verse 29 of Matthew 24, but immediately after the trouble of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the land will mourn, they, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He will send out his angels with a great shofar. We're talking about the Feast of Trumpets. Here's the angels going out with a great shofar, and they will gather together his chosen from the four winds, north, south, east, and west, from one end of heaven to the other. Remember John 5? We read that about five or ten minutes ago. John 5 has something to say about this resurrection. He had something to say about the resurrection that now is. Now he's going to talk to us about the resurrection to come. John 5, 27 to 29. He's also given the Son authority to judge because He is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in their graves will hear His voice and come out. Those who have done good will come to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil will come to a resurrection of judgment. An hour. How long does it take to raise the dead? Within an hour. On one day, God has appointed a day. And the dead will be raised. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They will hear his voice. Imagine. All of these will hear his voice and come out. Now, those that have done good and those that have done evil, I thought, I thought it wasn't by works. What part in the judgment, in the courts of judgment, do your works play? Imagine if you were standing in the courts of judgment. And there is the judge. And there is the lawyer. Who's going to be your lawyer, by the way? Yeshua. Yeshua, make sure. And, okay, you've got yourself there. You've got your lawyer. What else do you need to bring along with you? To, you know, say a few words. What do you bring along to court with you? Some character witnesses. Who are your character witnesses? Words. Do they save you? Do they execute judgment? No. But they witness. They witness at the court. That's your character witnesses. And that's how that works. Not by works for salvation. But make sure you have some character witnesses. It's not just your say-so. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Now, in John 6. Hallelujah. I love these verses. Now, this is the will of one who sent me. That I lose not one of all he's given me but raise each one on the last day. For 40 years, I've been ministering uh, across uh, Western Canada, the prairies, and the coast here in BC, and uh, here in Fraser Valley. And I'm going to be looking for those ones that sat under my ministry all these 40 years. And I'm going to believe God for this verse. I will not lose one. 
Amen. of all he's given me, but raise each one on the last day. Amen. For this is the will of the Father, that everyone who sees the Son and trusts in him may have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last Thank day. John 6, For no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. No one can come. All may come. Know the difference between can and may. Your, your grammar teachers had some, you know, they were onto something. Know the difference between can and may. You cannot. That means your power. That means your ability. You and I cannot. But we may. So who's, whose ability are we depending on? Ours? No. God's. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And I will raise him up on the last day. John 6. 55 to 54. So Yeshua said to them, Amen, amen, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in yourselves. Next week we're going to have communion. Uh, be there. <laughs> he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And what? I will raise him up on the last day. Now, 1 Thessalonians 4. We know this scripture. The shofar call of Messiah's return. We don't want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who are asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Yeshua died and rose again, so with him God will also bring those who have fallen asleep in Yeshua. Our loved ones, those that we have spoken of today, God will bring with him. And for this we tell you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall in no way precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself shall come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the blast of God's shofar. Trumpets, for the dead in the Messiah shall rise first. Amen. The Amen. dead are going to rise again. Amen. Come, Lord. And then we have Mark's Gospel 13. Uh, it's similar to Matthew's Gospel 24. Uh, it talks about how he will send out his angels and gather together his chosen from the four winds from the end of the earth to the end of heaven. And then 1 Corinthians 15. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Yeah. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last, what? Shofar, the trumpet, for the shofar will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Yeah. And all I can hear is handles. <laughs> we shall be changed and all that <laughs> oh praise God we're going to be changed yes. in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet Yeshua said all who come to me all who believe in me all whom the Father draws to me all who eat my flesh and drink my blood I will raise on the last day hallelujah the dead in Christ rise first and then we who remain will be caught up with him in the clouds. Hallelujah. Verse the, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 17 to 18. Then we who are alive and are left behind will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we always be with the Lord. Therefore encourage one another with these words. There is going to be a meeting. A meeting in the air. Praise the Lord, you and I. And all the glorious ones will all be there. There's going to be a meeting in the air. Yeah. And then to complete this revelation. This is, by the way, Revelation 14 and 15 comes after, just right after the seventh trumpet is sounded. What did Paul say in 1 Corinthians? That we will be changed at the last trumpet. And this is what's recorded after the seventh trumpet. Then I looked, Revelation 14, then I looked and behold there was a white cloud and seated on the cloud was one like a son of man had a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came out of the temple crying out with a loud voice to the ones seated on the cloud, put in your sickle and reap for the hour to reap has come because the harvest of the earth is fully ripe. You know, it's harvest time. These are the fall feasts. These are the harvesting feasts. Amen. You know, in, in the spring feast, Yeshua's ministry, uh, especially his death, burial, and resurrection, a Passover, 
uh, unleavened bread, first fruits, and then the coming of the Holy Spirit on Shavuot, on Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost had fully come. And here we have the harvest. And it happens to be <laughs> at the end, in the time of the trumpets. And the harvest is fully ripe. So the one seated on the cloud swung in a sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. Then another angel came out of the temple of heaven, and he also had a sharp sickle. And he had authority over fire, came out from the altar. And the one holding the sharp sickle said, Put in your sickle and gather the grape clusters from the vineyard of the earth, because her grapes are ripe. So the angel swung his sickle over the earth and gathered the clusters from the vineyard of the earth and threw them into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was stomped out outside the city, and blood flowed from the winepress as high as the horse's bridle. Or 1600 stadium. The coming of the Lord is a glorious thing for those of us that know Him, that believe, that trust Him. But for others, what will they do? The, the scriptures say they will they will uh, run to the caves and to the mountains, fall on us, and let us so that we do not endure the wrath of the Lamb. Oh, there are two possibilities, and only two. May we know Him. May we be part of that great resurrection and that great harvest yes. that is good. The Song of Moses, uh, chapter 15, Then I saw another great and wonderful sign in heaven, seven angels with seven plagues, the last ones, for with them God's wrath is finished. And I saw something like a sea of glass mixed with the fire, and those who had overcome the beast in His image and the number of His name standing by the sea of glass holding the harps of God, and they were singing the Song of Moses. In order to know the Song of Moses, you have to know what's in the Torah. <laughs> you have to know what's in the Tanakh. It's wonderful, you know, how many of you in grade five or so, you received a, a Gideon New Testament? I don't, I don't think they can even do that anymore, but you know, yeah, and you have the New Testament, plus Psalms and Proverbs. But how wonderful it is to have the whole story from beginning to end, and to know the Song of Moses. Great and wonderful are your deeds, Adonai Elohei Zavaot. Just and true are your ways, O King of the nations, who shall not fear and glorify your name, O Lord, for you alone are holy, and all the nations shall come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. What a day that will be. As much as we have had such a celebration today, we have heard wonderful testimonies of God's grace in people's lives. Amen. We are not patting ourselves on the back. When you have come to faith in Yeshua, don't pat yourself on the back and say, I figured it out. I figured out how it works. There was a gal in one of our ministries, and, and she was not a believer. And she never claimed to be a believer. But she could explain the gospel to other people. Other people said, how does this work? And she would, say, she would actually lay out the gospel for you. She didn't believe it herself, but she could explain it to other people. She figured it out. But it didn't do any good for her. She just knew, how, she just knew, the, she knew the formulas. It's more than a formula. It's following. He is the Lamb. And those who are his, follow the Lamb wherever he goes. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. What a day that will be. I trust that you already are a resurrection people, that you have passed from death to life, that you are part of the kingdom of the living God today by faith in Yeshua, in Jesus Christ, in Yeshua HaMashiach. Faith in him. There's no other way. You cannot work your way. You cannot do it by figuring it out. You, theology will not take you to heaven. I don't care how correct your theology is. It will not get you to heaven. It's a relationship with God through Thank Yeshua Lord. HaMashiach. Amen. We are a resurrection people. Amen. And I trust that each one here today knows the Lord personally as your personal Savior. Yes, no Lord. one comes to the Father except through me, except through Yeshua. No one can come unless the Father draws him. I trust that the God 
of creation, the God of redemption, is drawing you today Amen. to Him. Lord. Hallelujah. You have seen baptisms, dying to the old man, an old woman, <laughs> and being raised in newness of life. Hallelujah. We have heard of those names, roll calls, trusting that their names are truly in the Lamb's Book of Life. And we have heard today this celebration of the Feast of Trumpets. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't it be wonderful? You know, you know what we say these feasts are? These are the rehearsal without the hearse. <laughs> this is the rehearsal without the hearse. Wouldn't it be wonderful if, and I know I'm over time by about 10 minutes, but wouldn't it be wonderful if because we stayed for an extra 10 minutes, in the next minute, we were surrounding in the heavens itself. Oh, hallelujah. Be... Even so come, Yeshua. Amen. May it be so in each and every life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I, mean, I don't even know what comes next. Is there anything that's, that's on this? Just, the song of Moses, but um, I think it's the ironic blessing. blessing, yes. Yeah, we, there was so much on today's program, I got I, I just got lost <laughs> <laughs> wonderfully. So, uh, let's just end with blessed assurance. Blessed assurance, Yeshua is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of love. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior. The blessing that God has given us. Yevarekha, Yehova, Veshmareka, Yaer, Yehova, Panavaleka, Vekaneka. Yisha Yehova Panav Eleka Veyasem Leka The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn His face towards you and give to you his shalom. Uh, baptismal candidates, or not candidates, those that have been baptized after the Shabbat Medley, please meet me in the foyer and let's greet them in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Shalom, shalom.